Hi, this is the CAD CAM Lessons channel. In this video, I'll show you how to do something like this in FreeCAD. We'll create one solid, and then, based on this solid, we'll create another solid that will serve as a kind of negative of the first one. Along the way, I'll also show you some interesting and useful FreeCAD techniques. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new content. And if you'd like to support my work and treat me to a virtual coffee, you can find all the details in the description below. Thank you for your support. I'll start a new project and create a new parametric part. We begin by creating a sketch on the XY plane. Here I'll draw a rectangle with dimensions, for example 100 by 70 millimeters. Based on this sketch, we'll create a solid with a height of 10 millimeters. On this face, we'll create another sketch. In this sketch, I'll draw a circle with a diameter of 20 millimeters. And a centered rectangle with dimensions of 20 by 30 millimeters. Next, I'll create reference geometry based on this edge and specify the distances from this edge. 20 millimeters in one direction, 30 millimeters in the other. For the circle, we specify distances from the x-axis and y-axis, the origin, 30 millimeters in one direction. 20 millimeters in the other. OK, I close the sketch and create an extrusion of 10 millimeters, but also set a draft angle of minus 10 degrees. OK, now let's add some fillets. First, I'll select these two faces and add a radius of 2 millimeters. Next, I'll create a second solid that will serve as the negative. To do this, we create another body in the project. As you know, a body represents a single solid, so if we want separate solids, we need two separate bodies. I create another sketch on the XY plane. Just like before, I draw a rectangle with dimensions of 100 by 70 millimeters. Close the sketch and extrude it. Let's set the extrusion to 20 millimeters. Now we need to move this solid up along the z-axis by 10 millimeters. OK, we now have this second solid. In this case, it was easy. We just created a rectangular prism and moved it by a certain distance. Once we have this, we can move to the next step subtracting one solid from the other, but I'll show two other cases because sometimes creating such a solid isn't as straightforward. I'll delete this solid and its sketch. Another approach, we can use the face of the first solid as a reference face to create a sketch. Select the face and choose Create Sketch. A window appears asking whether to create an independent copy or a dependent copy. Let's choose the first option, Independent Copy, and click OK. Now, based on this face, we can create reference geometry. We select the Create External Geometry command. At this moment, I can't select any edge. That's because the original solid is still visible. So I switch to the Model tab, select the solid, and press the spacebar to hide its visibility. Then I go back to the Tasks tab and activate Create External Geometry again. Now I can create reference geometry using the edges of the face. This makes it easier to draw the sketch, especially if the shape is more complex and we want to reuse its geometry. In this case, we still just need a rectangle. Close the sketch and extrude it by 20 millimeters.
Note that this extrusion starts from the top face of the original solid. We now have two solids ready to use for the subtract operation. Since we created an independent copy of the face, any changes to the original solid won't affect this new solid. For example, if I edit the original sketch and change its dimensions to 120 millimeters, The first solid updates, but this copied solid does not, because the reference face was created as an independent copy. Now I'll delete this solid and repeat the process, but this time, when creating the sketch, I'll choose the dependent copy option. I again turn off the visibility of the original solid, create reference geometry, draw the rectangle, close the sketch and extrude by 20 millimeters. Now I turn the original solid's visibility back on and edit its dimensions. Let's change one dimension to 150 millimeters. The dependent copy updates automatically. The two solids are still linked. This can be useful in some cases. If we want to create a negative shape, we now perform a Boolean subtraction. We subtract one solid from the other so that the shape of the first solid is cut out from the second. But remember that in FreeCAD, the subtraction absorbs the subtracted solid into the Boolean operation. If you want to keep that solid in the project, you need to make a copy first. Select the solid you want to copy, press Ctrl plus C, choose to copy all, and press Ctrl plus V. Now we can perform the subtraction. Go to the part workbench. Turn off the visibility of the original solid, select the base solid, then control click to select the subtracted solid and choose the cut operation. As you can see, the subtracted solid is absorbed into the Boolean result. That's why we made a copy first. So we still have a separate solid available in the project. Now both solids are present, and you can, for example, move the copied solid to another position. This is how you can create a negative of a part in FreeCAD, and this workflow can be very useful in some scenarios. We'll finish here. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to this channel.